Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to be tearing apart this 18 horsepower Briggs to try to figure out what went wrong and perhaps we can find parts for it and rebuild it because it's still a very expensive engine and it's a shame that it's having the issues that it's having. I mean if you guys remember it was kind of a knocking noise, the crankshaft was loose. I'm kind of curious if on one of these uh, pistons on the bottom if the bearings are worn out. We might be able to replace that and fix it. So we should open it up and take a peek. All right, let's see here. I was actually at, I actually went and picked up the uh, backpack blower and the snow blower that's gonna be in an upcoming series from a subscriber by the name of John. And he gave me one of these flashlights. Um, nice guy. Anyways, on the back side here I was looking at it and there's a seal on both sides of this crankshaft that you can replace. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of aftermarket parts that are available. And by aftermarket I just mean parts for this that I can buy online. And I feel like with a good pressure wash and a couple, a few good parts in here, we could have a killer 18 horsepower engine that would work flawlessly. So. We're going to see what this needs, but first of all, we're going to just open up this case. Looks like maybe some 12 or 14 mil bolts, and then uh, a few springs and linkages here. And this case should just pop right off, and that's probably all we'll have to do here to see what is going on inside of this engine. You can see all the oil here on the case. That definitely means that we need a new oil seals. And then I believe it's considered a sump on the top, which is just like a oil case up there. This one piece of linkage is gonna just be giving me a hard time, isn't it? There's like a sleeve, it looks like, on the inside of around the uh, crankshaft here. And it's just a bearing. That's the only thing that's kind of holding this process up, so we're just going to keep working at it. There we go. See the bearing? <laughs> Governor. All right, and then this, this is our um, oil pump. So pull stuff up off the bottom. Ran by a gear that's on the crank here and uh, pushes it up and through. Coats all this, and then also um, the uh, oil filter sits right here, so it catches some of that as well. So you can see there's a little bit of gunk on the bottom of this. <sighs> Got to remember this oil is probably 10 below, 20 below as well, so. But yeah, this just, um, so this will sit in there like this, okay, because it, or like this, this is where the two bolts were, sits on the bottom, and then this spins. Kind of an interesting little design there. I wonder what that is. 
and as it spins it draws oil up and then splashes it around. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's getting heavy. I'm gonna put some paper towels here because we're gonna get it oil spilling out. I mean, obviously that's not, um, obviously that's more play than it would normally have because this case side is off of it. So what I'm thinking is happening is I think that maybe these bearings are just worn. Gosh, they certainly don't feel very worn. This bearing doesn't feel bad at all. Okay, so I'm gonna actually remove this whole crankshaft because I need to see what that bearing looks like on the other side. Things you should know. When I go to take this engine apart, it has timing. And the timing is represented by the two dots here. So hopefully you can see that. There's a little dot right kind of by my finger. You can see that one. And then there's another one right down here. And as this spins, see how they line up? So that's what you need to know. <laughs> there's timing to these. But to get this out, I have to get you guys in at a better angle here to show you. Okay, you see the bolt that I'm putting the flashlight on? Bolt there, there'll be one adjacent that we can't see under here. There's two bolts on each bottom side of the uh, pistons. So they go up, there's two bolts. I'm gonna guess they're like at 10 mil, because everything seems to be 10 mil. You get in there, you remove those bolts, and um, then the little bottom pops out. And that's, you'll see the bearing that I'll be talking about here in a minute. So. We're going to get in there and we're going to remove those four bolts. And then, at that point, the crankshaft can slide out. Okay, there's the 10 mil. Take it off. I'll use the 10 mil. Oh, no. oh. Now, when you take this off, you want to... You want to gauge, when you take these off, you definitely want to gauge what the uh, foot pounds or inch pounds are. Oh, this one happens to be a lot. <laughs> Three. I pulled that off. So this is on the bottom side that hits against the crankshaft. I pull it off. It's a nice glaze of oil in here. It, there's no heat marks in there. Looks real nice. Clean this up here. It's aluminum. Looks nice. Hmm. Let's see what the other one looks like. This one too. Nice little coating of oil on there. No crazy looking wear marks at all. Hopefully we get lucky and it's just the other um, hopefully we get hopefully we get lucky and it's just the other side bearing or something. Okay, so this top gear has to come off also to keep um, clear the counterweights because it kind of zigzags through there. Um, this runs a cam that works the valves as well. So the valve uh, push rods here um, have to 
have to come out or just be moved out of the way. So that's not hard, just to press it and move them out of the way. Okay, the uh, camera turned off there, but it was just because the clip made it to 30 minutes straight. <laughs> so uh, we're back. Put on some new gloves. Okay, we got the um, valves, the uh, push rods off. There we go. Here's our lobes. We will inspect these and see if they are bad, but at first glance, they look pretty good. They don't look uh, worn out in any weird particular way. So that's good. up there. Now, there we go. And this is what they call your crankshaft. So, once again, Take a gander here. Right here in the center, right here in the center is where both of those pistons ride. The big hole, that's for lubrication. You can see on there, it's not scored terribly or anything. There's no big gouges in it. It's nice and smooth. Take a peek here at the far side. Nice big, they got big oil holes on here. That's pretty impressive actually. Nothing wild or crazy here. Two little faint marks, but uh, nothing bad. Now for the fun part, which is the bearing that I believe is probably bad. Oops, sorry. Same thing with this side. It uh, slides. No considerable crazy amount of play. Inside of the cylinders. Uh, let's see if I can get you to peek there. So right there there's a little bit of scratching. Um, I'm not going to say that that's wild or crazy, but we will have to look into that. Side here. Uh, that almost looks like the actual, like, the scratches that are going side to side actually looks like, like the honing marks on this side. It's, uh, doesn't look too terrible. Yeah, I mean, they, they're not gouged anything wild or crazy. Um, and then this here, this is what they call a bearing. And what I'm referring to is the little metal lip right around the edge here that you see, kind of like the ring inside of the ring. And that there looks, let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys, that looks like there's probably some wear to it, and that's what I'm thinking is bad. Okay, so everything in here looks good. Um, the bearing on that back side, that little ring that sits in there, is actually kind of made to be changed out. I mean, it's made to be disposable. That's why they they put that extra piece in there so you can punch the, this one out and put a new one in. And I think that it's probably just out of tolerance to the point where there's play within it. Hey everyone, so we're getting started again on the Argo engine. I know we had talked about putting a new engine in here um, and there was a lot, of, a lot of talk about that, but I kind of came to the conclusion that it would be worth trying to rebuild this one first because all of the internals actually look fantastic. 
So what we're actually going to do is we're going to be replacing uh, this big bearing here, the oil seal, because it obviously was leaking oil. We got a new oil filter, crankcase seal, we got a new bushing in here and a seal for this side, which you can tell it was leaking oil like crazy. So we're going to go through, we're going to rebuild this. I priced it all out. I have it ready to go. It was 130 ish dollars. That also includes the new gear for the starter because you can see this one's real chipped up. You can replace just the gear. The starter is fine, just this gear is totally worn out. So that was like seven bucks. So I thought, you know, we were going to slam a Predator engine in here, which is still an option. We were leaning also towards getting another Briggs Vanguard or Honda, which is good as well. Uh, but the one thing that they don't have that this engine does is the pull start mechanism for the flywheel. And I feel like that's really important to have, especially with the machine being who knows how far in the woods. That pull start is kind of a really kind of a luxury thing that could save you if you're in a lot of trouble. So the rebuild being it's only whatever 120 to 150 dollars, being that it's so affordable, I am going to try to rebuild this engine because um, we already know it has new parts up on top. I'm going to go through, I'm going to scrub it down so it's completely oil free, clean it all the way and um, put it all back together and we're going to see if we can make it run. It's a beautiful evening here, springtime, and we drug the Argo in, drug it in with the lawnmower, worked actually surprisingly well. <laughs> and also today, it was warm enough where I was able to get this engine pressure washed. So we got all the other parts cleaned, and now we got the main portion of it cleaned, which is nice. You couldn't actually tell that this was red, this little coil here. Couldn't actually tell that that was red at all. <laughs> so uh, we got her cleaned up. It's drying off. I just pressure washed it. I had some car wash stuff for the foam, my uh, foam gun. Put some of that on there, let it soak for a little bit, pressure wash it again. But having it clean, especially these fins on the cylinders, will actually help to keep it a lot cooler, which should also help with the overheating of those uh, valves. But Last night I spent some time cleaning up all of these other parts. My camera actually ran out of um, space on the SD card, but I'll show them to you now. So we just we got the carb completely cleaned up. It's looking real good. Got the top clean. All of these have a little bit of metal work to do on the top of this one, but these are just plates that go on those cylinder head or the cylinder walls. So the spark plug actually goes in the main middle hole there. This goes around the starter. And this actually is what holds the carb up. So we got that all nice and cleaned up. And uh, this actually will, will be nice. It'll help the engine obviously cool down, like I said, but it also helps in the future to find any sort of oil leaks or anything like that. And it will be a lot nicer for me to be working in here because this thing was a greasy monster for a long time. <laughs> Need something on the back side here to suspend it up so we can kind of tap this out. Or we can just do it by hand. <laughs> that's easy enough. See how that's already Let me zoom me out here. Whoa. See how that's already coming out? Is our old bearing that came out nice so it's a little rusty because I had uh, cleaned it but yeah, there's just a little tiny bit of play which doesn't seem like much but 
over the course of maybe a two and a half foot crankshaft, it is a lot. So we'll see if that tightens it a little bit. All right, everyone. So late last night, I got out this uh, bushing here, which goes on the far side of the engine. That's the magneto side. Finally got it out using just, I was using a rubber hammer trying to be gentle and I actually needed to use a steel hammer and uh, a socket and just push it through. I This took me all week. I had tried to cut it ever so gently and stuff like that but um, we did finally get it through and I got all the new parts for this thing so we should be uh, we should be ready to slam this thing back together. Um, I'm gonna go grab those new parts and show you everything that we bought for it. All right, so here we have all the parts that we need. Uh, first of all, this is the breather, the gasket portion for the top of the engine, and has this little donut that sits in here too. This was leaking oil, so we got a new uh, gasket for it. Then we have, this is a oil seal for the PTO side. This is the large bearing for the PTO side. Right here is that bushing and also the uh, gasket seal for, the, for that side as well. That's on the magneto side. A uh, brand new oil filter, which will be, I'm sure this engine will really like that. This is the gear for the starter. Um, I always call it a Bendex gear, but you can replace just the gear. The starter itself was good, so I replaced just the gear, or I will be. And then two new Champion spark plugs. And all of this came to 100 and, it was 129 or 127 dollars. So definitely worth the gamble to order all these new parts versus buying a new $1,500 engine. So I want to make sure that this is as clean as I can make it in here. So as you can see in here, this gear is completely torn apart. Um, just years of being used, I suppose. But um, they make these gears out of like a hard, hardened like plastic. So luckily, the flywheel is in good shape. But you can replace these. So what you do is up on top here, there's actually kind of like a little C-clamp in this groove. Let's see if I can get it to focus on there. There. So you, you see how it's kind of open? So I'm going to have to work it with two screwdrivers, but you peel it up and around and then this pops off and then you just put the new gear uh, right back on there. So Okay, we almost got her here. A little hard to see through the plastic bag, but bear with me on that. Got it. So right there's the clip. Got our cap. Spring and then the gear. And you want to make sure with this piece, see how it's like a taco? You want to make sure that you get that facing the same exact way. Okay, and here is our new gear. So.
All right, I sat here and, th and thought about it for a minute. And I think what would work nicely, we set that on there. I was trying to do a socket, the socket wouldn't do it, but maybe if I go like this, because this kind of can move, right? Just kind of, oh, did that work? Oh, just out, just about, just a little bit more. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah. I got some of this dry Teflon loop. So Put it in from this side. This little tab goes up. Got that in there, and there's just real, just in there just enough. There's this little tab here that's bent up a little bit that makes it so it can't go out. But that's uh, right where it needs to be. Now we got this one. This one should be pretty easy. It's a pretty big bearing. That is good and seated. So Alright, so I'm just going to spray a little bit of WD in here. Don't want the seal to go in dry. And I don't believe I need to pack that bearing with grease because of the fact that it's um, going to be splashed up with oil consistently. is good there so I took the head off of this side so that I could drop the piston out and get the uh, it was actually kind of a good time because I was able to look at these rings the rings look fine um, 
Okay, they look good. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is on the back side of the shaft, you know, there's this threaded nut. And I'm gonna try to find, like, maybe I can use that old bearing to put as a spacer and then crank down on this to try to pull it through because it's just kind of, it's kind of tight. So, had to kind of get it past that point. There we go. Bingo. I don't know what it was about the beginning of that, but talk about a pain in the butt. Oh, there we go. All right, everyone, we have our gasket here. Sits right on there. And out our case. I did bolt in the oil pickup pump so that's good. Essentially it just sucks up oil from the bottom and then this slings it all over everything. Um, works pretty simple. So you get to set it on here and Kind of the fun part of trying to get it to sit in that new bearing. I guess we can just kind of put the bolts in and slowly tighten them down and it should pull the case in. on the new gasket for the breather. You see how this one's nice and pliable? This one here, it's brittle. Actually, they're different design. This one has double lines for the uh, to keep the oil back. So this must have been maybe a known issue and then they kind of revamped it with the double to prevent oil leakage. Spritz oil. So these gaskets are on there. Got this here piece, nice and shiny. Remember, we shine that up. put this cover on here. So it's like this. It goes over the starter. Like so. Allen headed bolts. A 
what happens with the exhaust is it warps due to heat and so you kind of have to use a pry bar to kind of persuade it All right, so here we have our valves. I'm gonna set these. Um, this is intake side. I'm gonna set that to point zero zero four, and I already checked, and it actually is at point zero zero four. So it's good and tight right there. The exhaust, however, right now is tighter than the intake, which I find interesting. So I'm gonna loosen up that exhaust to point zero one zero. I think the range they want is zero one zero to point zero one two it's pretty tight right now though so we are going to loosen this a little bit the engine is put together to the point where i believe it'll run we got the carb on everything like that the card in the camera ran out of space so that's why you guys are seeing it now i had to go and get her done it's nine o'clock at night but tomorrow we're going house shopping all day and it's like gonna be probably eight hours of drive time and I don't know if I'm gonna get to this. So I went inside, I grabbed another card. <laughs> Sam was like, she's just about to talk me out of doing this. She's like, I know I can't talk you out of it. So just go do it. So let's get this done. Cause, uh, oh my God. <clears throat> oh, I forgot how heavy this thing is. But it's been such a crescendo. Then I have to do it. You just gotta do it. Alright. All I gotta do is just set it in here, finger tight the bolts, and hook up a fuel line. Oh my gosh. Oh. There we go. Oh. I put the battery right in here. I have a feeling. But this thing's about to start. Let's give her a rip.
Jeez. This is the old microphone. We're gonna go to the new one. Rose, say bye bye. Bye bye. And say it's the new one. The new one. <laughs> All right, everyone, we have the Argo and the wood chipper loaded up, and inside of the van, we have the Jari weed cutter, and we have it strapped in just in case. Um, if you ever get in an accident, something like that really gets me nervous. <laughs> oh, so. You might be wondering, uh, well it looks like quite the load I guess, but the Argo's working good, this shredder is working good, uh, the weed cutter isn't finished yet, but if we take a peek in the garage, you'll see that we have a bunch of house stuff packed up here, a bunch of garage stuff there, the top shelves are empty. And so now I guess it's time for us to give you an update. <laughs> I have been recording the whole entire process, but we did sell our house here that we just bought last September. And we're making a pretty big move. Um, what would that be? Maybe three hours uh, up from here on the north shore of Minnesota, which uh, is actually where we wanted to be for a long time. And there's quite a few reasons behind why we're going through and doing this and I will kind of give you guys that update in uh, probably my next video which is uh, us moving so be sure uh, to see that but yeah we close in roughly from this video uh, <laughs> three weeks from now we, we sat on Friday and today's Saturday so this will have been our first like 24 hours at our new house and it'll be really exciting so a lot of changes come with that and I will explain that in further detail I guess in the next video but what I need is I need to get some of this stuff out of here and that's why we're gonna run this up to dad's and I'll do my test drive of that thing up there and kind of go over it up there um, that way I'll have a little more room to roam but yeah there's been a little bit of a delay in in the videos that I've been producing because I have been super busy dad has been extremely busy right now he's on his third trip down to Louisiana which is its own story if you guys haven't been following that you should go follow that and uh, yeah so we are both busy with houses <laughs> and unfortunately uh, with that the whole YouTube stuff I wanted to do an opening fishing I wanted to do a bunch of stuff it's all in the back burner because I have to focus on this and get this out of the way and then I can focus on that so bear with us with patience for a few weeks away and then things will be more exciting because I plan on taking you guys with and showing you this house and there's a whole process with that as well so all right, tomorrow morning, and I want to leave around six o'clock. We are going to hit the road. Um, I should be up there then uh, by nine o'clock, and get this stuff unloaded, and then be back here to spend my afternoon with the family. And I, we were originally going to wait, and Dad was going to swing on by with his snowmobile trailer because it's a little bit easier to load that stuff, but. Then he got brought back down to Louisiana for the third time and he has been so busy I don't know if he's had much time for himself so I thought you know what I will it's kind of a bear to load this thing I didn't show it I'll show unloading it which will be just as fun um, but I thought you know what I'm gonna spare him his time I'm just gonna take care of this because he's been driving here and there and everywhere and uh, I got a free day, so I'm going to run and do it, but all right, that's all I really have for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, and we will get this trip out of our out of our way. It should be good, and we'll get that Argo running up there, and I can, I'm just going to take it down the road a little bit, I think, and uh, have some fun, so all right, see you guys tomorrow.
All right, my guilty pleasure. We got our sausage egg and cheese McMuffin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we are just gonna chill here. It's just about eight. I'm a little bit early, so I'm just gonna hang out here and relax for a second and then um, eat this and head on up there, but it should be, uh, we should be good. Okay, everyone, we made it here, and Dad wanted me to park it right inside of his woodshed for now. That way it keeps it out of the rain. And then hopefully I can get the uh, wood chipper somewhere in front of it here. Uh, we should be able to get it all sitting right inside of there, which will be nice. Okay, I got this board on here, which is how I loaded it. The Argo will sit in the trailer, but the pins that lock the tailgate in stick out about an inch and a half on each side. And so the only way I was able to get this Argo off before was to put a big pry bar in there and bend the sides out. And I didn't want to do that again, so this is the 
this is what I came up with. <laughs> it worked to get it on there, so hopefully we can get it off.
just got to walk that jarry weed cutter and I'm just going to lay it against the wall there.